A season of no fear. What an emotional roller coaster. No regrets. Tickets punched to the national semifinals. You owned your gift, and it has led you here. Living in your wildest. Now is the time to ignite. Keep it rolling and go do something special. Let's go, baby! Unleash everything you have in your heart. Drills it into the floor. This LSU team is unstoppable. And propel yourself to new heights. You have thrived in competition. So you can do what you love. Fight for what you have earned. Exquisite. I just jumped out of my seat. And bring your dreams to life. Storybook ending. At the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Welcome to Fort Worth, Texas and Dickey's Arena for the 2024 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. And special thanks to Emma Roberts for voicing our intro. She stars in FX's American Horror Story Delicate Part 2. Airing all new episodes Wednesdays on FX and streaming the next day on Hulu. Hello everyone, I am John Roethlisberger and I'm joined by Olympic champion Ali Raisman for this NCAA championship and this is what we're looking at today. There are two sessions of this NCAA semifinal. The session coming up, LSU and Cal come in as the top two ranked teams. Ali, Arkansas and Stanford, kind of the Cinderella stories with the Tigers and the Bears being the favorites. Yeah, so LSU and Cal are the favorites to advance to the finals. They are the team that a lot of people have had their eye on this season. However, Arkansas and Stanford are peaking right now, so we can't count them out. Well, talking about the favorites, the LS LSU Tigers, you can't talk about them without mentioning maybe the greatest gymna gymnast to ever put on a leotard, Haley Bryant. Yeah, Haley Bryant has the whole package. That vault is one of the best in the country. The height that she gets on that sets her apart from everyone else. Haley has the ability to get 10 on every single event. And on beam, over 180 degree split, exactly what the judges are looking for. And her floor tumbling, she does all front tumbling, which in my opinion, sets her apart from the rest of the competition. Well, right behind the LSU Tigers are the Cal Bears, and they're led by a couple of all-around stars of their own. Yeah, MJ Frazier and Maya Lazan. These two gymnasts have the whole package as well. You're going to see a lot of incredible dynamic gymnastics from these two today. Well, we will see how those two battle it out around, along with the Cinderella stories. And to talk more about that, the third member of our team, I like to call her the straw that stirs the drink. <laughs> Taylor Davis, what you got? I'll take it. Well, Stanford season began with a list of injuries and adversity that head coach Tabitha Yim said created a resiliency in this team, the very thing that propelled them through one of the most competitive regional weekends. And Arkansas, their theme all season has been the team that did it. Translation, qualify for the first national championship since 2018. Both teams may have defied the odds, but the coaches have emphasized postseason is about who maintains composure when the lights are the brightest? Thanks, Taylor. Well, the table is set. Four teams come in, only two come out. For the dream, two will end, two will continue. This is the last stop to the final destination. Competition begins next. Welcome back as we get ready for competition here in Dickey's Arena. Here's how things are gonna work. All four teams will compete simultaneously, but will alternate events. So you will have a chance to see every single routine, two at a time. Six athletes compete on each apparatus. The lowest scores drop. And that is an important part of women's gymnastics. That means if they have a major mistake, it's not gonna be the end of the day. They can drop that low score. The five highest scores count. Another thing about the postseason and the NCAA championship, six judges per event. The regular season there is two. They go to six. The high and the low is dropped. They average the remaining four scores. The other great part about this NCAA championships is the stream team. Look at that. Every routine, you can see it right there. They're going to be covering 
each routine, Bridget Sloan, Sam Peshek, Anastasia Webb, Kennedy Baker, a who's who of great gymnasts. They will be paired up for a couple events each, and you can go to ESPN Plus to see it all. We've got every event and every corner of this arena covered for you. And here we go. Begin the competition. KJ Johnson from LSU will start them off on the vault. Anna Paula Gutierrez for Stanford over on the uneven bars. Yeah, on the bars, Coach Yim said that this routine makes her heart flutter because she is not afraid to go big. And on the vault right now, this is one of the best Yurchenko falls you will see. The height on that was just fantastic. That vault is out of a 9.95. I watched KJ Johnson in, in practice yesterday do that vault and just stick it over and over again. Took a little hop there, Allie. You know for her, hopping on that vault is like a miss, right? I know this meet is going to come down to those little landings, but what's impressive about KJ's vault is it looks even higher in person than it does on TV. Calista Gamio now the leadoff gymnast for the Razorbacks on the balance beam. The Cal Bears, they're getting things going on the floor exercise. This is Maddie Williams on the right-hand side of your screen. Yeah, on the beam, I spoke to Coach Ross, and she told me that since freshman year, she's had a natural ability on beam to remain calm, and she's been the leadoff since. Very difficult back layout, layout, step out. Such an important lineup spot, Allie, the leadoff on any event, but beam seems like even more so. Absolutely, it is crucial. She started off in the regional final and got a 9.95 in the leadoff spot. And to give you some perspective on that, that's the type of leadoff score we see from the number one ranked team, Oklahoma. That's the anchor score you see from almost every team here. To do it in a leadoff spot, man, especially here at the the semifinals would be huge for the Razorbacks. Yeah, and this routine has been fantastic. So calm. Very hard to start on the balance beam when you're nervous, but handling the pressure so well. Round up, one and a half dismount. They are going to be so happy with that routine. Arkansas ranked 16 in the nation out of the regular season on balance beam. If they can come out strong, Allie, on beam, oh, all the events, put up a big number there. They put themselves in a situation maybe for an upset. Trying to chase those top two spots again are these teams. One and a half punch front layout on that floor routine. Great start for Cal as well. Chase Brock will be the second Tiger to go over on the vault. KJ Johnson in the leadoff spot at 9.825. Adding in another half twist that we just saw KJ, one and a half. I could tell from the table this was going to be a big vault. She kept her elbows so tight on the table, which is what helps her get that height. Big step on that landing though. Really that three foot margin on those steps and hops is supposed to be the margin where you jump to a two tenth deduction alley. And that one certainly pushed that envelope. Yeah, I'm curious what the judges will do. Gymnastics is a subjective sport, and we have a different angle than what the judges are seeing. So they could take up to two tenths on that vault. Maddie Jones next to go on the balance beam for the Razorbacks. Ava Sorrento on the uneven bars. They led off with a Gutierrez 9.8875. Oh, that is a very difficult skill. She missed her hand. I think she just did not get the timing on the low bar at the right time. I hope she's okay. Those are sometimes scary falls. Watch this, one of her arms just completely misses the bar. Very savvy cat-like to get to her back though. Yeah. That landing. Yeah, the thing that's so difficult about competing on podium is the bars can be bouncier that these gymnasts are used to at their home gym or in other competitions. So you have to quickly adjust the timing of your skills and it's really hard to do that especially under the lights and the pressure. You can see those leather grips on her hands. There is a, a thing called a dowel. A little round short piece that is in that leather and if you don't get that over the bar which has looked like she had trouble there you are not going to be able to hang on and that's what looks like what happened to maddie jones oh oh i was going to just say she repeated the beginning of the routine did a good job i give her credit for going for that pirouette and trying to get that handstand position unfortunately a fall is five tenths so she's already at a point deduction so they will want to drop this score 
There is so much pressure on these athletes. They not only want to do it for themselves, but also for their teammates. She's got 45 seconds to get back up on the bar. Puts pressure on the rest of her team to be able to hit a routine. Obviously referring to Ava Sorrento when talking about that grip slipping on the bar. And that is an unfortunate bar routine. Again, you mentioned it, Ali. Top five scores count. No doubt about it, Stanford's going to want to drop that Ava Sorrento bar score. It is not going to be a good one as Maddie Jones finishes another good Beamer team for Arkansas. Yeah, I spoke to Coach Weber about this team starting off on balance beam, and she told this team, we get to start on our best event. The team looked at her kind of confused because they think of floor as their best event, but Coach Weber wants them to believe how good they are on beam. Jordan Kane, the second gymnast on floor for the Bears. They let off with a strong 9-8-6-2-5. Amari Drayton on vault for LSU. Slight under rotation for Amari on vault. That vault is out of a 10.0. Vault is the only event that they can take an under rotation deduction. So they might take a 10th plus that step back. Chase Brock, a 9.825 in the two spot for LSU. So a pair of 9.825s leading to that Amari Drayton vault. Looks like she just really was trying to stick that alley, maybe look for the ground a little early. Yeah, it's difficult in gymnastics. You don't want to go for that stick landing. When the technique is good, the stick will come. The score tower on the right-hand side of your screen. Something new added this season to women's gymnastics, and it has been fantastic. All the scores for these athletes on the right-hand side there. You can follow the team totals at the bottom. Callie Swainy, now the third gymnast to go. So a pair of 9-8 scores for Arkansas. 9 8 so good start for them. This is where you want to see them approach those 9-9s, nine hopefully pass up that 9-9 nine, nine score. That is what the best teams are going to do. You want to advance to the finals. 9-9s nine, nine are the scores that'll get you there. 9-8s keep you in it, but 9-9s nine, nine help you advance. Jordan finishing off with a beautiful, floaty, effortless layout. Something else that's challenging is during the regular season, these gymnasts compete one at a time. They're not used to hearing floor music and other gymnasts go on other events. So it's really important they stay in their own mental box, especially on beam and bars. Well, Allie, another element of these championships that are different is how far they are from their teammates. Obviously, Ava Sorrento very disappointed in that last bar routine as Brenna Nault is about to go up for Stanford right now. Her teammates down here in the corral were cheering her on, very vocal. She was having a hard time hearing them. So you have to create your own energy. You also have to be your own supporter if things go wrong. Yeah, that's right, Taylor. When I was competing, I would listen for my coaches and my teammates. So it can be really hard if you're used to hearing your teammates in practice and you don't hear them in competition because it's loud, it's really hard. Brenna finishing with a double tuck dismount. Way to come back strong on bars. And they needed that one. So much pressure on the athlete that follows a mistake. You've been there, Allie, in the, on the biggest stage and your teammate has a mistake, it just, things tighten up a little bit. You get a little more on edge and to go up there and hit clean, that's big for them. Yeah, absolutely. I've also been the one to make a mistake and you love your teammates to become your sisters. So it's hard when you know your teammates are relying on you, but everyone's human. She came back strong. Savannah Shane here, the fourth gymnast to go. Num another 9-8 score, 9 8 one, two, five for great. Down. I like the body position in the air. The judges are looking for hips open, especially towards the end. Very clean vault. LSU needed that one. Those nine eights for them on this event, I consider them, well, they're number two in the country on this event. I think they might be the best vault team in the country. They needed this stuck landing. Yeah, keep an eye on her hip position in the air. Judges want to see a straight body. Ella Cesario, now the third gymnast from Cal on floor exercise. 9.825 for Jordan Kane, right before her. I spoke to head coach Crandall Howell about starting off on floor, and she said she was excited about it because she felt like they could get their nervous energy out on floor, felt that they could kind of get almost a warm up in, and they're used to ending on beam at all the away meets this season, so she feels that it's a good advantage for them.
Cammie Weaver, the third, fourth gymnast, rather, to go for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Coach Ross told me that Cammie begins her routine by taking a moment to herself. She salutes to the judges, lifts her chin, and has daggers in her eyes. She told me she's a fierce beam competitor. Big save on yeah, beam. Good save on beam. Judges can take up to two tenths for that. She did not put her hands down, which is good, but always hard to have a big wobble like that on your first skill. Ella on floor, good double back. Almost looked like she had too much juice. Hop back on that. Judges want you to think about, did they have to take a step or did they want to? Again, looking at the score tower on your right, as you see three or more scores get populated, the lighter shaded score, that is currently the low score for that team. You look at Stanford's bars, that 8.6 is their lowest score. That is the score that they will want to drop. Hopefully the rest of the scores will be higher than that one. Ira Alexeva now for Stanford. Every routine critical for them. This is a routine I'm excited about for skills like that, that shoulder flexibility, the height on that Pike Jaeger. Handstand was textbook. Judges allow for a 10 degree window on that handstand. Otherwise there will be a deduction. This is a great routine. A little short on that handstand. Blindfold connected right into a double back. It's one tenth bonus for that connection at the end of that routine. So two for two hit routines after that Sorrenta 8.6. Now Kaya Johnson, the most difficult vault being done in women's gymnastics alley. Yeah, Yurchenko double twist, the type of vault done at the Olympic Games makes it look too easy. Savannah Shane here right before her, the first 9-9 nine -nine of this first rotation of this competition. Watch how quickly she twists. So difficult. I love how she takes the extra risk. She doesn't have to, but she wants to, and I admire that. Ella Cesario for Cal, 9.825. Kyan Mayhew now, a freshman on the Desert Devils Gymnastics in Arizona. Fourth gymnast to go here again. Nine nines. Keep your eye out for nine nine plus scores. Which team gets the most? Those are probably the teams that will advance. Only two come out of this session. On floor, pay attention to this front pike. I like when the second skill is higher than the first. Haley almost came off of the beam. That's a very difficult connection. Side aerial to lay out, step out. At least two tenths in my opinion for that wobble, but didn't look like she touched her hands down on the beam which will save her some extra tents. This is freshman Haley Klein, as you mentioned, Allie on balance beam, and notably she's following Cami Weaver's 9.6625. Not a score that they can afford to count, and with that Haley Klein wobble on that pass, they are in a tough spot here in the first rotation. Dismount, round off, one and a half. Did a good job coming back from that routine. Absolutely needed that stuck landing there at the end of that beam routine. And then on floor, that punch full was very effortless. Cal looking very ready. Their endurance is paying off. Their hard work is paying off. Kaya Johnson for LSU Vault in 9.875. Cal just methodically getting through this floor rotation as we look at vault again, and maybe the biggest piece of gymnastics you will see in women's gymnastics is right here with Haley Bryant. The height and the way that she can twist and open up, it is fantastic. Different vault than we've seen from her teammates. This vault is also out of a 10.0 start value. Keep an eye on this height and the way she kicks open to try to spot that landing. That hop, though, that is a 10th hop. And keep in mind, today, between these two sessions, the high score on each event in the all-around, those are your NCAA champions on those respective events. Haley Bryant, best vaulter in the country, in my opinion, but that hop might cost you the title there. We shall see. Here's the uneven bars with Anna Roberts. I like that double layout. Her knees and her toes were glued together.
Watch her toe point. Such a difficult release move. So hard to keep your legs together when you're twisting in the air like that. And then keep an eye on this double layout. Toes together. This is a different angle than what the judges are seeing. So Haley Klein, a 9-6-3-7-5. That is a new low score now for Arkansas on this event. They are going to have to count. Cami Weaver's 9.6625. Serena Linton now, the final gymnast to go for the Razorbacks. Maya Lazan on floor exercise for Cal. She is their fifth athlete to go on that event. Back handspring, back handspring, layout, step out. You can see from that second back handspring, she was a little off, did a great job correcting it. Maya on floor doing a beautiful front double twist. Oh, and a, into a punch front. Then on beam, going to be at least three tenths of a deduction for that slip. Sometimes on podium, the beam is bouncier than the gymnasts are used to. And then you add nerves on top of that. It's really hard to do balance beam when the beam is a little bit shakier. Finishing up with her last tumbling pass. Round up one and a half into punch layout full. That was a really nice controlled landing. We have some individuals competing here today with the teams. They are individual qualifiers to this NCAA championship. Left hand of your screen is Georgia's Lily Smith. She is a freshman. She is the SEC freshman of the year. She is sensational. She is doing the all around today. Here's her first event. Good body position in the air. She actually piked that down at the end. She didn't need to, which is the pike made her over rotate and take a hop and a step back. Lily's ranked top 20 in the country in the all around. Keep in mind, again, individual awards today for all American honors and championship honors as Chloe Widner now, the captain of this team, on the bars. And that first release move was so high. I like how dynamic she is on this event. Textbook handstand. Just a dismount, double layout. Oh! oh. You know what judges are looking for as her chest went down, they deduct for that. It's so hard in the moment to think that quickly, but if she kept her chest up, didn't fight for that stick and took a step forward, she might not have gotten as big of a deduction. Yeah, if she can stick that properly at the end there, she's probably looking at a 9.9 plus, probably gonna be about a 9.8 just because of that landing, unfortunately, but great recovery for Stanford on or on uneven bars rather. They will drop that 8.6 from Sorrento, here is our individual on the balance beam. Amani Herring from Penn State. The individual here, she is a sophomore out of Denville, New Jersey. MJ Frazier, the final gymnast to go for Cal on floor exercise. Yeah, what you'll notice about MJ is the choreography and her attention to detail. Pay attention to her hands, her fingers, everything is so polished. Tumble layout, so much difficulty in that first tumbling pass. Amana Herring finishing up balance beam. Penn State had a good season. You can see head coach Sarah Brown there. She's in her seventh season. They upset the Michigan Wolverines to get to the regional final. Great season for them. Impressive flexibility. Judges are looking for over 180 degree split. No issues for MJ there. Run through into a double tuck.
Great rotation for the Bears. Just one score in the 9-9 so far, pending that Frazier score, but just solid and methodical and probably exactly what they need to do to get through this session into the finals. LSU Tigers 9.9 .9 for Haley Bryan, a pair of 9-9, solid rotation for them as well. Stanford Cardinal finished strong on the uneven bars as a team dropped that 8-6. The story though of the first rotation is Arkansas's balance beam. Unfortunately, they're gonna have to count two scores in the 9-6s. Not a good start for the Razorbacks. Here we go with another individual, Courtney Blackson. She is a senior from Boise State. And this is a routine I'm excited about. That was one of the most impressive shootovers I have seen. She held that on top of the bar. Watch this skill right here. Very unique, huge release move. Don't see that release move often anymore. The toe point is fantastic. I think she's gonna be happy with that. And here's the thing, give yourself a shot at the title. She went up there and she absolutely crushed her routine, probably as good as she can do. Perfect landing at the end, and you just never know, Courtney. You could be a national champion on this event. Yeah, it is so much easier said than done. As a gymnast, you want to go big on everything. You want to attack the event, but when you're nervous, doing your normal is so much easier said than done. They get the stick stick if you're a Stanford Cardinal. It seems appropriate. Another all-arounder competing here as an individual. Skylar Kilo Willow from Washington. She's a senior out of West Des Moines, Iowa. Front handspring, front double twist. Judges want to see control out of every landing. This is the only event that you don't have to stick. You can step out of it and ludge, but the judges need to see control. Otherwise, they will take deductions. Well done from Kilo Wilhelm. Pay attention to her body position in the air. Judges are looking for complete extension. And then watch this layout at the end. She opens her arms, helps her have more control on that last tumbling pass. First rotation is in the books. It was an exciting one. The LSU Tigers, though, the favorite from this session there behind the Cal Bears. We're gonna learn more about the LSU Tigers when we come back and the journey they've had over the last year and a half. Welcome back to Fort Worth, Texas. After one rotation, the Cal Bears Hold a slight lead over the LSU Tigers, Stanford in third. Arkansas dug themselves a little bit of a hole after one rotation, but the story is those top three teams all within a couple of tenths of a point. It is exciting so far here in this semifinal. LSU Tigers, Alley. last year it was an unbelievable challenge for them. They had so many injuries. You can see them listed in this graphic on the screen. So many challenge, but it really did a lot for the growth of this team, really. Yeah, head coach Jay Clark called it the year of Cinderella on crutches, but it really allowed so many leaders to step up and they have come back stronger than ever. I think this is the best they've ever looked. And despite all those injuries, they made it to the national championships and finished fourth. Certainly a year of character building for the Tigers. This team does it for each other and they're very connected. They pour into each other. I love each and every one of those girls. Everybody brings something different to the team. 
being able to bring the joy and intensity to every single competition is something that this team has latched onto, and I think it's really, really worked for us. Bailey Bryant! Wow. She steps in! This LSU team ah! is unstoppable tonight. Our consistency, our confidence has grown tremendously, and I'm just so proud, and I feel like the sky's the limit for this team. One thing at a time. Start fast, finish strong. We have the goal in mind of what we want to do. We obviously came here to win a national championship, but if we do our normal gymnastics, support each other, encourage each other, then the results are going to play out just as they should. Jake Lard told us this team was completely unselfish last season because they had to be. But the question was, would that characteristic carry over when they had the depth and consistency at their disposal? And the proof has been in the pudding so far this season for the LSU Tigers. Like they said, the goal of a national championship has been at the forefront. And the same connectivity and emotion that led the charge last season is still present for this team here today. We've got plenty more action still to come. The Tigers will head to the bars where they are ranked third in the nation. The NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship continues. After one rotation here in Fort Worth, it's the Cal Bears on top, LSU in second. And the thing that jumps out to me, not just the Arkansas troubles on beam, but LSU on vault, their lowest vault score since the 26th of January. Certainly not anything to worry about at this point, but certainly want to improve that should they make the finals. Here's our individual scores from that first rotation. Lily Smith and Skylar Killo Wilhelm are all arounders. Courtney Blackson, the highest score on the uneven bars, an individual trying to win a national title. Of course, we got the stream team. If you want to hear commentary on every individual event, there they are. We put them up there. It's like gymnastic star detention but they're awesome at their job. Go to ESPN Plus and you can hear them talk about all the events. They are having a good time up there. Sam Patrick, Bridget Sloan, Anastasia Webb, and Kennedy Baker on the call on the stream team. Here we go with our second rotation. LSU will be on the uneven bar. Stanford, they move to balance beam. Arkansas on floor exercise, an outstanding event for them, Allie. They're gonna have to be great to get back in this. And meanwhile, the Cal Bears, the top team after one rotation, they go to the vault. Maddie Williams, left hand of your screen, getting things started there for the Bears, and Alexis Jeffrey for LSU on the uneven bars. Yeah, on vault, I noticed Maddie runs almost on releve. Beautiful vault, she does that to control the timing into the round off. And on bars, Alexis fell on her dismount at the regional final. She's got to be patient with the dismount, but also quick to finish the rotation. Right here, very high. It'll be interesting, Allie, to watch LSU. They had trouble with landings on vault, and I don't mean falling, but hopping around. First bar routine, another hop. They need to settle into those landings, a huge part of scoring big in women's gymnastics. Claire Dean on balance beam for Stanford, coming off a great first rotation on the uneven bars. And Callista Gamio, a great starting athlete for the Razorbacks, get things going here as well on floor exercise. And Claire on beam, that was a difficult connection. Side aerial into a layout step out. She actually switches her legs in the air, which is very unique. But I think the judges will take at least two tenths of a deduction on that. Didn't seem like she put her hands down, but starting off on beam is a very important role. Very nerve wracking. Dismount round off one and a half. So we saw Stanford on bars with a mistake. They recovered, got to drop that score. A little error there from Claire Dean, a wobble in that step. Not going to be a huge start score from them. They'll want to build, keep themselves in this. Kaya Mayhew will be the second ball to go for the Cal Bears. Maddie Williams led off with a 9.8875. As far as first scores in rotations, that is fantastic. Your Chaco, one and a half. What I like about that back handspring onto the table was it was on her fingertips. She got 
that allowed her to get so much height in a good block off the table and on floor finishing with a effortless double tough i don't think the judges will take off anything for that lunge it was so controlled great start for arkansas on floor arkansas number nine in the nation on floor exercise they, again, are going to have to put up big numbers, about a half a point outside of second. Again, top two are the places you want to keep an eye on. Winning is nice, but it's not the most important thing today here in the semifinals. It's being in the top two and advancing. Here on balance beam, Sienna Robinson will be the second gymnast for Stanford. Ashley Cowan for LSU in the two spot. Alexis Jeffrey, a 9.8125. And on bars, watch Ashley, watch the height on this release move, going to connect immediately into an overshoot. We talked so much about handstands. She doesn't have to hit that handstand because she connected immediately from that release move. Has to be above horizontal, though, for the judges not to take off. Double layout, dismount. Sienna on beam, layout, step out, nice and controlled. Keep in mind, Stanford just 0 .075. Less than a tenth of a point behind the LSU Tigers for that second spot. I know it's one rotation, but you hang around long enough and you give yourself a chance to do the Stanford Cardinal. I like the rhythm of that. That was a nice connection. Judges are looking for a fluid movement on beam. Anytime there's too much of a break and a stop, they will take off. There should be no deduction for that. Freshman Haley Klein now on floor exercise. Had some trouble on balance beam. Got to put that behind you now. Focus on the floor exercise. They need big, big scores here. Nine nines. Yeah, whenever I struggled on an event, my coaches would always tell me, turn the page, move on to the next chapter. That's exactly what Haley has to do. Front layout, step out. We don't often see that into a double tuck. I don't think she went out. Almost looked like she was going to step out of bounds. Impressive she stayed in. We'll get a deduction for that slide backwards, but you said it, Allie. Saved a tenth by staying in bounds, which it looked like she did. MJ Frazier will be the third gymnast for the Bears on ball. Kyan Mayhew, 9.875. MJ is going to do the same vault we saw from Kaya Johnson. Uh, Yurchenko, double twist. Very nice, impressive, over-rotated it. Judges will take off a couple of tenths for that landing, but the air was beautiful. Very difficult vault. Give her a lot of credit for going for that in this competition. Well done from Haley Klein. We are told that they did not raise a flag on that floor team, which would have indicated she stepped out of bounds. Here we are with Brenna Nault. Follows the 98375. You see that 96875 for Stanford, right hand of your screen. Gotta drop that score. <laughs> Beautiful three skills connected in a row. Kaya Johnson for LSU follows Ashley Collins, 9875 on bars. What you'll notice about this bar routine right here from Kaya is she is so dynamic and intentional with every handstand like that. Has one of the best dismounts in the country. We see this often, but not many like that. There you go. They needed that routine. That was fantastic. Coach Jay Clark right there ringside. He loves it. You get the sticks going and they can be contagious. They've eluded LSU quite a bit so far through a rotation and a half, but Kaya Johnson, like a dart, gets it done for the Tigers. Yeah, Coach Yim says that Brenna loves gymnastics. It's hard to get her out of the gym. Makes me happy to hear that. Maddie Jones, the third Razorback here on floor exercise. 
Well, Maddie Jones is living out a goal that actually played a part in her collegiate decision. She actually turned down a full ride to another program to be a walk on at Arkansas. I asked her what led to that decision and sacrifice, and she said this coaching staff and the belief that they would take us to the national championship. And they are here at the national championship. Got some work to do. Maya Lazan on ball. Got a 10 at regionals. Not I, today, but pretty good. I love the height and the amplitude off the table. Maya was so clean in the air, legs were straight. MJ Frazier, a 9.85 for that Yurchenko double full. Two yet to go for the Cal Bears on ball. Maddie, one and a half to punch front layout. Very clean gymnastics from Maddie. I think the best choreographers will choreograph dance into the routine to allow them to catch their breath in between their tumbling and their jumps. Yura Alexeva on the balance beam for Stanford. Senior out of Plano, Texas. Competed for the Russian national team at the world championship level. Arkansas coming back strong on floor. On beam back handspring layout. Solid. One of my favorite quotes for beam is whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. You have to be so decisive with every skill. Connor McLean now one of the outstanding freshmen this season in collegiate gymnastics and man can she put on a clinic on the uneven bars yeah this is a highlight for me pay attention to her toe points coach clark says he trusts connor more than he's ever trusted another freshman and you are going to see why pay attention to this dismount wow that handstand was textbook watch her knees and her toes glue together the entire time just that little slide back, probably a half a tenth slide. I gotta think we're looking at about a 995 for Connor McLean. She follows Kaya Johnson's 9.9. .9. Watch her toe point connected right into a pack salto. And then pay attention to this from this angle. Her legs are together the entire time. One of the best in the country, in my opinion, on that event. Jaden Silver's now on ball, follows Lazan's 9.9. .9. Oh! Chenko, one and a half, under-rotated that in gymnastics. You can't go for the stick because if you think about the stick, sometimes you forget to think about what you have to do in your roundup back handspring to get the right height. First big break for the Cal Bears, but keep in mind they've got four good scores already. And I'll tell you what the coaches are telling Ella Cesario. She's the last gymnast on vault. Don't try to stick, just land on your feet and they will be just fine in this rotation. Leah, William, Leah Smith rather on floor exercise for Arkansas. Stepped out of bounds on that first tumbling pass. Not uncommon to see a lot of out of bounds in a big competition like this. Hard to control your excitement and the adrenaline. Chloe Widner now on balance beam for Stanford. She's gone 10.0 on this event this season. She's number eight in the country on this event. Follows Alex Zavas, 9.8875. For Chloe, I think it's the flexibility that stands out to me. In those leaps, she keeps her hips open to get over 180 degrees. Leah finishing up with a great double pike Opened up just a little bit too early. Chloe was very off on that, but did a good job continuing to move her arms. Judges should still give her that connection. Impressive she was able to correct herself that quickly. Beam is only four inches wide, so if you're a little bit off, it's very hard to correct yourself.
Savannah Shane here going for LSU on bars right now. The transfer from Florida who has acclimated so well to this LSU team, not just a consistent contributor, a vocal leader. I've been down here by the team. She's the first one to speak to someone after an event, a key piece for Jay Clark this season. The height on that Jaeger was fantastic, able to completely finish the rotation before catching the bar. Jaden Silvers, 9.275 for the Bears on vault. Cesario, the last gymnast to go. She lands this vault. They can wipe away that 9.275. Justin Howell, co-head coach in the background there for the Bears, telling her, just land on your feet. Chanko full, they needed that. Always added pressure when you go after a teammate who makes a mistake. An easier vault, just a 995 start value, but playing it safe at a moment they needed to. Yeah, her form in the air is really nice. I like how her toes are together. So they will definitely drop that 9275. We'll see what that Cesario score ends up being. LSU on bars, they are rocking 99125 for Connor McLean. Lauren Williams will be the next Razor back on floor exercise. Meanwhile, Anna Roberts and the Stanford Cardinal. They started slow with that Claire Dean 96875 alley, but Chloe Widner 98375 and trying to get a big one here, and they will absolutely keep themselves in the mix halfway through. Broke that connection on beam. Anna wobbled in between that. Judges can't see a wobble in between that connection. On floor, Lauren Williams doing a huge tuck full in on that first pass. That mat, that mat right there is not a deduction. It's just to help protect the athletes' bodies. A little bit of a softer landing. Anna on floor. Beam doing a good job, remaining calm, taking it one skill at a time. Clean landings from Lauren on floor. Great finish from Roberts and Stanford on balance beam. We'll see what that number is. Trying to chase down that two spot. Skylar Killo Wilhelm, the next vulture to go. The individual eating here all around. I like the control from Lauren on that double tuck dismount. Skylar did a very clean Yurchenko full out of a 995, just a small, I think, half a tenth deduction on that landing. Skylar, a 98875 for her floor team in the first rotation. Nice vault there. Haley Bryant now, the next gymnast for LSU. It's been a very good bar rotation. Just the low score of a 9.8125 from Jeffrey in the leadoff spot. Haley Bryant, perfection should be her middle name because she is the 10-0 queen currently in collegiate gymnastics. Here she is, last gymnast for the Tigers. Yeah, and it's because of handstand positions like that. Haley doing a good job taking her time in between each skill. Sometimes when you're nervous, you tend to rush. No issues here. Watch this dismount. Double front with a half twist. Little foot shuffle back, but I tell you what, 9.9125 for Haley Bryant will put LSU in the lead. And I think it's harder for her to make toast in the morning than it is to get a 995 on bars. Watch this handstand position. Judges allow for a 10 degree window. Shouldn't receive a deduction. Double front half twist. So difficult, especially doing that at the end of the routine when you're tired. We will see if that is enough to move LSU into the top spot. Now, Nikki Smith, Michigan State gymnast, sophomore out of West Bloomfield, Michigan. Individual competing on balance beam. Michigan State, an outstanding season, won their first ever Big Ten team championship. 
unfortunately had a disappointing regional and did not advance here as a team. A lot of people thought they would make it this year. They're an up-and-coming squad. Wow, Frankie Price on floor. Stunning double layout. And on balance beam, Nikki's going to do one of the more difficult dismounts that we see in the competition. It's a round off double tuck dismount. Stuck this in warm up. Did two in a row, stuck it. Amazing. Goes for the big difficulty and it pays off. Frankie showing off her endurance. The height that she gets on her tumbling and the jumps is what sets her apart. The Frankie Price finishing off a good floor rotation. They will drop that 9625. Will the Razorback? This double layout is so difficult. She didn't even have to pike that down. She kept her hips open in that layout position the entire time. So few gymnasts in the world can do that. Lily Smith now from Georgia on the uneven bar. She is absolutely special on this event. Has gone 10-0 this season in just her freshman year. Yeah, you'll see why for skills like that. Watch the extension of her knees all the way to her toes. Wow. Beautiful routine. Just a small little shuffle of her foot on that dismount. I think she could go 995 on that. Haley Bryant, 9.925, currently the high score on this event. Lily Smith competing in the all-around, but also can win individual event titles, depending on how she scores. And All-American honors are at stake today as well. Now over to floor exercise, Shea Campbell from UCLA. Such a fun gymnast to watch. She is a senior out of Carrollton, Texas. A disappointing finish to the year for the Bruins. They got upset in the regionals by Arizona State, so could not continue on their journey, hoping to be here at the national championships this year. But Janelle McDonald in her second season leading the Bruins certainly has a bright future there. Full in, this routine is a highlight for me. She puts on a show. Fantastic routine. Not many can perform like that. I love the Razorback supporting her, putting up the 10 sign for Shea Campbell. Really, the camaraderie between the individuals and the teams is something special. Yeah, it's it's pretty special. They're used to the individuals are used to coming with their teammates. So it's kind of like the teams adopt the individuals. It's really nice to see them cheering as if they're on the same team. And there, this is her teammates cheering for her and screaming for her. I love to see the support. I believe that was actually Marzetta Fraser, MJ Fraser's sister, wearing a Cal t-shirt, but she's a Bruin. <laughs> so there you go. 
been a good rotation for the LSU Tigers and Taylor's got the head coach of LSU Jay Clark. Thank you John coach not the typical vault rotation for your team but three routines nine nine or better on bars how'd they respond. Good I thought we were a little flat when we came down we were hopping around all over the place and then and then uh, kind of told him we need to pick it up a little bit. We can't sleepwalk through this thing. This thing is, is you know, anybody's game, as you okay. know. And so did a little better on bars. We just got to keep that momentum going. We're, we're kind of that team. Once we get the fire lit, we usually try to keep that, that momentum going. It's a got an old saying around here that momentum's a dangerous drug. So let's hope <laughs> we got a bunch of it. We're used to seeing that from you guys. Best of luck. Thanks a lot. Allie, we talked about those landings. They seem to finally come through a little bit on bars, but other than that, great rotation for the Tigers. Great rotation. Kaya Johnson, double layout dismount off bars, one of the best in the country. Connor, this toe point is fantastic. Dismount from Haley Bryant, double front half twist. I think this is gonna be great momentum heading into beam. So halfway through the LSU Tigers, they have a slight lead over the Cal Bears and just a couple of tenths ahead of the Stanford Cardinal. When we come back, let's learn more about the Cinderella Cardinal. What a season it's been. Halfway through here at this NCAA semifinal, LSU on top, the Cal Bears right behind. But like Jay Clark said, you can't get complacent. Stanford Cardinal, 0.2125 behind that coveted third spot. Allie, Stanford, what a season. Opened in the 193s, couldn't even field a full lineup at that meet. And now here they are in the NCAA semifinals. What a journey. Yeah, it is impressive the improvement that this team has made. Head coach Tabitha Yim says there isn't a moment that feels too big because they feel they've had to handle so much adversity this year. Stanford punched their ticket to the national championship. We've just been through so much as a team this year. We had injuries, varying complications, but I think we all knew that we could make it. We kept working and fighting for every 10th and doing everything for the people on our right and on our left. It really takes a village. That we knew that we always had our team. That gave us the confidence to keep going. They have literally left everything on the floor. The regionals experience was absolutely insane. We were so energized having those big celebrations and Chloe hitting her floor routine. It was just a magical moment. Chloe Widner, it's a 10! Getting a national title would be amazing. We have worked for this moment. We deserve to be here. We're just gonna give it our all and see what happens. The athletes told me even through the adversity this season, they stayed true to the belief that it wasn't happening for no reason. They said it's going to come together. It may not always be pretty, but this team is always gritty. And that grid led them to the national championship along with Arkansas as well, who defied their own odds. We'll learn more about the Razorbacks when we come back. How regionals was Intense. It was fun. Arkansas is heading to the national semifinals. It's definitely a day I'm going to remember forever. It was just so much joy and excitement and a lot of emotions because we've worked so hard to be here. It really has felt like we've gotten better every single week this season and this team has earned their confidence, truly. Definitely got that swagger on this team that is just like our calm confidence that we bring everywhere we go. And I think we use that a lot. Like even when we walk into the arena, we walk in as a team, everything that we do is just like together. Our team is so excited. It's all of our first times being here. And so I think we're just excited to get this experience and just to show the world who Arkansas is. The team's theme is the team that did it. And they want to show everybody why they deserve to be here. They got a little work to do. They are over eight tenths behind that coveted second spot in the top two. Cal LSU, LSU now moves past the Cal Bears, but right behind them, just a little over two tenths are the Stanford Cardinal for that second spot. Your individual scores in that last rotation. Lily Smith, a 9.925, she ties Haley Bryant for that event high score. 
as she also chases some all-around honors as well. In this rotation, LSU goes to beam, Stanford to floor exercise, Arkansas to vault. Cal Bears are on the uneven bars. And here's the thing, Allie, both LSU and Cal, they still got to go to beam. And I love to say the meet doesn't start until you go to beam. It's only four inches wide, and it's not bigger in Texas, actually. It's still four inches wide in Texas, but you got to go there. And it's a tough place to be as Cammie Weaver vaults for Arkansas. Wow, uh, that was fantastic. That vault is out of a 9.95. .95. That score is going to be very close to that. And on bars, Maya Lazan. She is in this leadoff role because the team and coaches feel that her energy sets a good tone for everybody else. Stuck dismount. Good start for Cal. Sierra Ballard starting off on balance beam. I know you love her in this leadoff spot, Allie. I do. Sierra's confidence on this event. She takes a lot of pride in going first. I like how she attacks the beam. First skill, back handspring layout. Big test for her. Claire Dean will lead off. For Stanford here on floor exercise. She also led off on balance beam. Had a little bit of trouble there, just a 9-6-8-7-5. They really need to continue to be lights out. Maybe even better than they've been through the first half if they want to keep in the hunt for that two spot. Cal is gonna put it together. The Cardinal need to do the same. Sierra on beam imagines she is between two brick walls. It reminds her to stay tight. Claire starting off with a front handspring, front one and a half twist. And I'm being round up, one and a half dismount. Good start for LSU to get this team's confidence going. Ashley Nat, the main beam coach for LSU ringside, right in front of us actually, thrilled with that leadoff. Again, such an important lineup position. Sierra, again, just does what she's done all season, just delivers. Cammie Weaver led off with a 9, 8, 8, 2, 7, 5, rather, for Arkansas on ball. Leah Smith here in the two spot. Arkansas, nothing to lose at this point. They've got to go for perfection every time. Wow. Two excellent vaults. Wow, that is gonna give the rest of the team so much confidence going into this event. They got the memo. Go for perfect. And that's how you're supposed to do it. Watch her elbows position on the table, her body position, the quickness, it's dynamic. Exactly what the judges are looking for. 995 start value, so that would be essentially a 10 if she gets a 995. Can't go higher than that. Certainly look like at least a 99 to me. Cal Bears led off with Maya Lazan on bars and a 9.9 .9 as your leadoff score. If you're the Stanford Cardinal in third place trying to catch the Bears, you don't like to see that. But this is an event, though, that the Bears are outstanding. Ellis Cesario, the next to go. Savannah Shane here for LSU follows Ballard's 9.9. .9. Yeah, and on bars, Ella, this is one of the best Jaeger connections into shoot over. I watched Cal in practice on this event yesterday, and they just hit routine after routine. Double layout, dismount. Where some of those stuck landings may have eluded the LSU Tigers, not so much for Cal in this rotation on bars. That full turn is a requirement on beam. All these requirements and bonus points add up to a 10-0 start value. Amanda Zhang for Stanford, the next gymnast on floor, 9.8375 for Dean. A good start score, but man, it's hard to get excited about it when Cal and LSU put up nine nines in the leadoff spot. Excellent. 
excellent stuck dismount on beam. Amanda on floor, first tumbling pass. I like the height of that first tumbling pass there. Looks like LSU is kind of finding their mojo, and that is a dangerous thing if you're the rest of the country because LSU can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody if they are on their game. Dee Dee Bro, the longtime head coach at LSU, you can see her in the stands as well, loving it. Frankie Price, the next gymnast on vault, follows a 9-8-8-7-5 from Leah Smith. So they have been working really hard on those landings. That hard work is paying off. Jordan Weaver, head coach of the Razorbacks, did tell us earlier this season they like to do vault onto a raised surface. They stack mats, make the vault harder. Not a fun thing to do as a gymnast, but certainly looks like today at the most important part of the season is paying off. I don't know if Arkansas could have asked for a better vault rotation so far. Savannah Shane here puts up a 9.925, and currently that's the high score on balance beam. And that is only the second gymnast to go for LSU. Connor McLean. We talked about how unbelievable her bar routine is, Allie, here as well. She shows off that artistry. She's been perfect on this event as well. Andy Lee on the uneven bars for Cal on bars watch this jaeger i think that's the best jaeger i've ever seen in my life dynamic and high on balance beam connor mclean does switch leap switch leap pass four tenths bonus for that connection right there what sets connor apart on this event is she is on releve on a lot of her skills doesn't give her any extra bonus points, but just looks more beautiful, leaves the judges with a better overall impression. Even that wolf jump, that's a skill that so many of us learn at a young age, but she does it better than most, showing off her flexibility. What a routine from Lee on the bars for Cal. Three routines. Almost perfect with stuck landings. They already have a pair of nine nines. Where are the judges going to go if they keep hitting like this? Gainer full dismount. So much fun to watch. Connor McLean on the bars and the balance beam especially. She's great everywhere, but those two events, wow. Victoria Cluck on floor exercise for Stanford. 98125 for Zhang. Again, I, I hate, hate to keep going back to it, but those are good scores, but doesn't look like good enough with Cal and LSU doing what they're doing. Dakota Essen Price on vault for the Razorbacks. Victoria doing an impressive double layout. Dakota on Vault, Yurchenko one and a half more difficult than we've seen from her teammates. Those lines on the vault, the judges use as a guideline. So the judges could take up to two tenths because she went over that line. It's one of those things I, I find it funny. They got the lines, but it's kind of also a guide. You know, how far out did they go? And it leaves it up to the judges to kind of decide what they want to take. Yeah, it's interesting. In the elite world, the judges use that to take off a deduction, but in college they use it as a guide. So it depends on what the judges decide to do. It'd be interesting to see what score she gets and how much they take off for that landing. It's been all nine nines for the Tigers on beam. They've got three all-stars yet to go. The first of those three is Kaya Johnson. Stuck landing for Victoria on that double tuck. Now, Kaya Johnson's going to do a skill back handspring layout. We see this a lot in college, but not many do it dynamic like that. Kaya is a very consistent competitor, but she has struggled on this skill right here. Switch leap, switch leap. No issues today. Told me she has to remember to keep her arms tight because when she doesn't remember, that's when she runs into trouble. Front toss right here. MJ Frazier now on, and even Barris for Cal, 9.9125 for Andy Lee. LSU and Cal, all 9-9 nine nine so far here in this rotation. Yeah, Cal and LSU 
are so good on bars and beam. MJ is so fluid on this event, effortlessly floats from one bar to the next. Double layout dismount. <laughs> Kaya, round off double twist dismount. Both of them just pushing each other to the next level. Two heavyweight fighters just back and forth, left and right of your screen. It's like a cat playing with a ball of yarn. I don't mean to, to make the other team sound like they're not outstanding, but when you see greatnesses like this, it's finally like they said, enough is enough. We're knocking that ball, ball of yarn off the table and we are gonna take control of the meat. And that is exactly what Cal and LSU are doing right now. They are pulling away. Freshman Haley Klein follows Dakota Essen Price's 9.7625. A little disappointing, especially because that's their first 10 0 vault. Trouble on that landing. Haley gets a lot of distance on that vault. Brennan Nault on floor exercise. Victoria Cluck a 9.7375. Can't count that. If you're Stanford, in fact, you can't only not count that. You got to go nine nines the rest of the way. LSU, Haley Bryant mounting the beam, getting them going. When we talk about Haley Bryant, who is this year's AAI award winner, we always talk about consistency. I asked her how she's managed that. She said, I live a very consistent life and I train very consistently. But she said a key for her is never trying to replicate her own success, creating new success. And I love that take because it is easy, I think, Allie, for gymnasts who who've reached the pinnacle the way she has and done so well, you feel like there's this pressure to do it again. You've been there too, two Olympics, two gold, you know, those gold medals. How hard is that though? How hard is that focus? It is so hard. And I think that that's what makes her such a good athlete. For example, that skill right there, standing punch front, most gymnasts can't even do that on the floor. It requires so much strength. Haley also told me that Coach Clark tells her, your normal is enough that helps relax her in pressure situations like this. Her normal absolutely is enough. I've said Haley Bryant makes greatness look boring because she does it so easy and she does it again right there. Keep in mind, Haley Bryant, not just trying to help her team advance to the next round of this championship. She's the number one ranked all around her in the country. She's trying to win that all around title. Jay Frazier puts up the fourth score of 9-9 or better for the Bears. Gabby Perea now here in the fifth spot. Lauren Williams finishes things off for the Razorbacks. On vault. Wow. Almost oh. a stuck landing on vault for Lauren Williams and Gabby keeping up the momentum that her teammates have started with. What a great rotation for Cal on bars. It's hard to find a deduction when you watch them. Then watch her body position in the air. It is hard to see where you're going. Does a good job bending her legs to anticipate that landing. Aaliyah Finnegan will finish things off on the balance beam for the Tigers. 9.95 for Haley Bryant. So she either has a loan or a share of the number one score on bars, beam, and in the all around. It's tough to go in that early session today and have those individual scores hold up, but if anybody can do it, it's Haley Bryant. Anna Roberts for Stanford, fifth gymnast to go on floor exercises. Aaliyah Finnegan, as I mentioned, finishes things off here on the. Big test for Aaliyah right here, back handspring, layout, layout. Very difficult to connect those three skills in a row. Aaliyah told me that she thinks about anything except for gymnastics when she's on this event. She completely relies on muscle memory. I can see Aaliyah taking deep breaths in between her skills. Ariel 
slight waver right there. Fantastic beam rotation from LSU. I think they're going to be really happy with that. That's going to give them a lot of confidence going into their last rotation where they're ranked number one. Not a bad feeling. It's funny, that beam rotation was so good. You see that little tiny balance check from Ali, and you're like, oh, like it's bad, right? I mean, but it, that's just a testament to how good the rest of that rotation was. Over to Vault for our individual. Anaya Smith from Arizona State. Wow. That was fantastic. That landing position landed completely upright with her chest up. You can see how excited she is for good reason. That was probably as good as she could have done it. Yeah, she qualified in from the regions with a 9-9, so probably going to pass that up. Jay Santos, the head coach of Arizona State right there, he loves it. As Maddie Williams for Cal finishes their bar rotation. Gabby Perea, 9.9125. Holy cow, these two, you can see they're, they're event totals for LSU and Cal right next to each other, both over a 49.5. Lily Smith now on balance beam for third event of the day. Started a little bit slow on vault, but picked it up certainly on arguably her best event, the uneven bars, but equally great here on balance beam. Chloe Widner on floor for Stanford, fresh off her first career 10 on floor during regionals as the team clinched their trip to the national championship. But she told me she actually had no idea she scored a perfect 10 until way after the meet. She said she had calculated the score, realized she had gotten enough for her team to advance, and began celebrating the team goal that had been achieved. The personal accolade was just a cherry on top. Yeah, she got enough. It was a 10. It was perfection, and what a leader she has been for Stanford this season. This routine for Lily is impressive. That front toss with straight legs. Been so solid and confident on this routine so far. Wow. Oh, oh didn't dude. hold that stick. Judges are looking for you to hold that stick for one second. Otherwise, the stick doesn't count. She's going to be so happy with that. And last year, they would have done the quick turn, the college stick, right? And maybe got away with it, but not this year. That is probably going to be a total of a tenth off for that landing, but beautiful on the apparatus. What stands out to me in this routine is the choreography and the way that she performs it. Chloe showing off why she is the anchor spot on this team. So they do finish strong. Does Stanford it? They are going to fall back a little further out of that second spot in this rotation. We'll find out how much exactly when we get that winner score in. But I love the fight from the Cinderella team. Ranked 19th in the country out of the regular season and they made it here to the championships. Skylar Killo Wilhelm now on the uneven bars, last rotation, 9.85 on vault. Having a good day. Keep in mind, Skylar's had to wait the entire Cal team to go, so she's not that warmed up. This is impressive, takes a lot of mental toughness. Double tuck dismount. Good day for her so far. Fantastic job there. One of our other individuals, Anaya Smith, a 99375, puts her in the top spot on vault. Good. Piked Jaeger connected immediately into that overshoot in this dismount is a double tuck dismount, opens up, spots that landing. Three great events for Kilo Wilhelm from Washington. Now our individual here on floor exercise, Skyla 
Schulte from Michigan State. Junior out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. The 2022 Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Back-to-back -back Freshmen of the Year in 22 and 23 for Michigan State. Nikki Smith was also here, was the other Freshman of the Year in 23. 9.975. The high score for Kyla Schulte on this event. Capable of winning it, certainly. At the regional final, she stuck both tumbling passes. Hopefully she'll do the same today. Tuck full in. Great control on that step back. There's a stick that you wanted, Allie. The high score on floor right now is MJ Frazier, and it's a 9.9375. Let's see if Schulte did enough to give her a shot at a national title here. This is exciting. Watch this tumbling pass, difficult, full in. Controls that landing, and then this last pass, front through to double tuck. Pay attention to her feet, they don't move. The end of the routine when you're out of breath, the amount of endurance and hard work that that took to be able to do that. I mean, she, Stanford even gave her a tree branch. I mean, I'm assuming that's a compliment if, if somebody from Stanford gives you part of a tree, right? I would guess so too. I love the support that the teammates have for the individual athletes. I was getting emotional watching it in practice yesterday. It's really nice. The high score on vault so far was Anaya Smith from Arizona State. Here's another look. Watch her body position when she sticks this. Wow. Just perfectly in the right spot. The high score on beam so far, Haley Bryant. Front aerial connected into back handspring. Dismount front one and a half. Haley showing why she's Haley. 9.95 for that routine. Well, I hope you've been enjoying our new score tower that's been on the right side of your screen today. But we want to take a moment and let you know about one of our colleagues who is a big part of the design team for that scoring tower. Jeff Holdsworth, a senior software engineer with ESPN from 2012 to 2024, passed away on Sunday at the age of 37. Throughout his career, he earned five Emmy Awards for his outstanding contributions, a testament to his talent, dedication and innovation during his tenure at ESPN. Jeff is survived by his wife, Jess. He will be missed. Through three rotations, LSU on top of the Cal Bears. 0.0875 is the margin between them and second and third rather Stanford Cardinal falls a little bit further behind that second spot those are the two spots that we are really watching today those top two teams will advance right now it's Cal and LSU these Cal Bears though in the last few years Allie they've really shown that they want to be that newest team on the top of the mountain yeah they still have beam to go but they are so good on this event. I'm very curious and excited to see how it's going to go, but I think that bar rotation is going to give them momentum and confidence ending on that. Plus, they're used to ending on beam at all of the away meets in the season, so I think they're going to do really well. 
with the top score today of 198.275, the California Golden Bears. I would describe the identity of Cal Gym as passionate. You know, we go out there and really compete with freedom and joy. Without joy, there's like not a lot of passion. So you have to have joy and then the passion, like everything drives off of that. She has good power on this event. <laughs> Execution! I just jumped out of my seat. I think having a smaller group of girls makes the connection piece a little bit easier. Having a really close, connected team is what really can push a team towards success. This particular Cal team really believes that when they are competing for each other and enjoying what they're doing, that they can compete with absolutely anyone. If we go out there, trust our process, trust the training, and just translate what we do every day in the gym to the competition, we'll be great, we'll be fine. Make no mistake about it, this Cal team had every expectation of making it to the national championship here today. I asked Maya Lazan how they would do it. She said if we compete with joy and total freedom, something that's been on display through three rotations. Now an event that they certainly compete freely is the balance beam. They are second in the nation. They've got two athletes in the top 10. They head to that next event when we come back. NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Living in your wildest Welcome back to Dickey's Arena. John Roethlisberger, Ali Raisman, Taylor Davis. We are through three rotations, and the top two teams coming in were Cal and LSU, and right now they have taken control of this meet. LSU just ahead of the Bears. Stanford currently in that no-go spot in the third position. We'll see if they can pull a miracle off here as we look at the individual scores from those la that last rotation, highlighted by that Anaya Smith vault. So Stanford trying to keep that Cinderella story going, Allie. They are just under a half a point behind that second spot. They've got to really be perfect here. Maybe get some help from the Cal Bears if they want to advance. And here's Amanda Zhang for the Cardinal ball. Amanda's going to do your Chango full. Good clean landing, a little bit of bent legs in the beginning of that ball. A good start for Stanford. Callie Swainy for Arkansas on the uneven bars, leading things off there. Now it's Cal's turn to go to the balance beam. And Swainy finishes up that bar routine. Andy Lee will lead things off. She finally came down from the sky on that Jaeger alley. That was a mile in the air on the uneven bars. But again, they are great on this event. You love talking about the Cal Bear beam rotation, but you got to stay on. Easier said than done. Head coach. Head coach Liz Crandall Howell is actually a judge. She's been judging for over 20 years. I think this gives this team an edge. She focuses on routine construction, finding elements that are most suitable and least deductible for each gymnast. Connor McLean will lead things off on floor for LSU. And I talk about an embarrassment of riches. They are outstanding on this event. And dare I say, McLean, maybe the greatest leadoff floor routine in the entire country. Watch this. Connor opens up with a massive double layout. Andy handling the test of that critical leadoff spot so well. So much pressure going up first on balance beam. The team, the coaches have to have so much trust in you to go up first. Cal just needs five hits to get through this session into the finals. Now they just need four. Claire Dean over on ball follows Zhang's 9.7875. Chanko full, same ball we just saw. Connor ending on floor. Controlled that landing. Toe pointed even in her tumbling passes. 
lot of talk about collegiate gymnasts continuing their elite careers and trying to make that Olympic team later this summer. Well, it's not ruled out. Connor McLean might be one of those that wants to take a chance and take a shot, rather, on that journey to Paris. There is talk that she may try to compete at the U.S. Classic here in about a month. We shall see. I know a lot of us would love to see her out on that floor on the elite level. I hope well. she does. Maddie Williams following Lee's 9875. Again, Cal does not have to be lights out here. They just need to be good. Jamie Pratt for Arkansas follows Sweeney's 98125. Arkansas trying to finish on a positive note over a point back of that second spot. Really, for all intents and purposes, insurmountable unless they get a lot of help from the teams in front of them in the form of mistakes. But still want to finish strong here. This is a good routine for Jamie. She's dynamic and aggressive. I can see the confidence in this routine. Maddie fell on this skill in the regional final. Big test for her. Back handspring layout, step out. No issues today. Easy. Switch leap, split jump. Coach Howell from Cal told me they, they do a lot of things to distract the athletes in practice. Air horns and cold routines and a lot of distractions on beam in particular to try to get them to focus. And man, they have been really something special. Number two in the country on this event this season and they do it as well as anyone. Amari Drayton, sensational freshman for LSU, follows Connor McLean's 99375. I mean, that's just not fair. <laughs> Amari just opened up with a double layout. Practically stuck that, no big deal. Brennan Nault on vault. Follows Dean's 9725. Those scores not gonna help Stanford move into that second spot. Unique ball, haven't seen that today. Impressive distance. The distance off the table is something the judges are looking for. They're gonna be happy with that. Ella Cesario on beam for Cal, getting ready to go. One thing I've noticed down here on the floor, John, is just how composed this Cal team has been from start to finish. Keep in mind, they had two uncharacteristic falls on bars in last year's semifinals that ended their championship run, and the athletes told me it brought them all back with a hunger, not just to make it to today, but to make it to Saturday. You know, that's one thing, talking to the coaching staff from Cal, and I noticed this last year. They remind me of Oklahoma, and not that you want to be compared to other people, but if you're going to be compared to anybody, you want to be compared to Oklahoma. They have a toughness about them, and nothing has come easy for them. They don't have a fancy training facility. They work out at 8 a.m. every day. And I said, you know, Coach Howell, does that, do you think that creates toughness? He said, absolutely. And it's in Liz and Justin's DNA to be tough, and I think it makes a huge difference in settings like this. Oh. Oh. And just on cue, right when I'm just telling all the great things, they have a mistake, but not gonna hurt them too badly if they can finish strong the rest of the way. Ristro Tar finishing up for Arkansas on the uneven bars. Nice routine. Yeah, Reese on bars, that's a highlight for me. Her execution is fantastic. And Ella on beam, it's always stressful to fall at a competition like this, but they can drop the score. Amari Drayton put up a 9-8-8-7-5. K.J. Johnson now takes to the floor. Cesario so finishing up beam. K.J. Johnson, such a fun athlete to watch. One of, one of the most fun, in my opinion. She's got so much personality in big gymnastics. Last year at these NCAA championships, in the semifinals, she went on floor after recovering from a foot injury, a broken foot, and she knew that she could re-break that foot. 
And I asked her about it before the competition here today, and she said my, there were so many injuries from my teammates. I knew if I could get out there, I had to. Re-injured that foot during the routine, but that helped LSU get to the NCAA final. Floyd Whitner on vault for Stanford. Best vault we've seen from Stanford so far. The height on that vault stood out to me. The amplitude off the table. KJ Johnson on floor opens up with a full in. What's impressive about that is most gymnasts need to grab their legs to help with the rotation. KJ's got so much power, she doesn't even need to. What's impressive is I could stand there and she could do it over my head. It was unbelievably high. Reese Drotar, big 9.925 for Arkansas. That Drotar score gives her a share of the lead currently on that event. It's a crowded leaderboard, but she's got a piece of that number one spot currently. Wow. Finishes up with a double tuck, the type of control that is exactly what the judges are looking for. Be interested to see what the judges do with that. They've put up six athletes, and if any one of them won the NCAA title in that event, it wouldn't surprise me. And KJ, one of them, I think she gets a little overshadowed because of the, the Haley Bryants and the Kai Johnsons, but her routine, every bit as good, in my opinion, as anyone else in this lineup. I agree. What stands out to me is the endurance and the strength that she has. Can tell she does a lot of conditioning to be able to do that routine. MJ Frazier now on balance being followed. A 92875 from Cesario. That is not a score they want to count, but Stanford not putting up huge numbers on vault, so they still got a margin they can work with through the Cal Bears as Priscilla Park for Arkansas on the uneven bars. Priscilla Park doing a very high pack salto, higher than most, impressive. MJ on beam has a very important role. Front aerial connected into that layout step out. I think the most important person in the competition is the one that goes up after a teammate has a fall. Has to do her normal, which is so much easier said than done. Aliyah Finnegan getting some words from floor coach Courtney McCool Griffith, 2004 Olympic silver medalist. I'm impressed with MJ's ability to remain calm. Round off one at, or cartwheel one and a half. Good routine. Good for them to get back on track. I think the judges heard us, Allie. KJ Johnson. The high score on floor exercise so far in these NCAA championships, 9.95. Well deserved. Aaliyah Finnegan now. She will be an Olympian this summer, competing for the Philippines. Anna Paula Gutierrez now follows Widner's 9.85. Hey, I tell you what, if you're Stanford, rock these couple vaults, put some pressure on the Bears. Wow. Well, there's one. Wow. Fantastic vault. Aaliyah on floor doing an Arabian double front into a stack jump. Gets one tenth bonus for that connection. Stanford doing exactly what the goal is. Each vault is building, getting better and better. Maya on the fifth gymnast to go here for Cal. They do have that 9, 2, 8, 7, 5. There are three, there are three high scores they have on this event, all in the 9, 8s. Good scores, good enough. Just need to stay on here, do their last two gymnasts. Maya showing off her flexibility. And Aaliyah Finnegan, two and a half punch front. Difficult tumbling pass, especially at the end of the routine. I can feel LSU's confidence. Big test for Maya on beam right now. 
Back handspring, back handspring, layout step out. She looks cool. She looks calm. You would never know a berth at the NCAA Finals are just two routines away for the Cal Bears. Priscilla Rock. Park on bars a 9.8. Jensen Scalzo now takes to the event for the Razorbacks. Jaeger release move on bars. Caught that on her fingertips. Dismount on beam, double twist. Wow. And that, that, that is what veterans do, Allie. And they hit when you need to hit, and the junior does it for the Bears. What stood out to me in that routine was she was patient, took her time. Sometimes when you're nervous, you just want to get off the beam. Watch the height the and the stuck landing right there. Liz Crandall Howell, the right of your screen. Obviously, loving that. Anna Roberts now here in the anchor position for Stanford. Coaches don't tell their athletes to try to stick a landing often, but right now, you just, you gotta stick it and see where the chips fall. Yeah, I don't think Anna gets the credit she deserves oh! on this event. So clean. What a great rotation for Stanford to end on. Anaya Smith from Arizona State hates that vault because she's the top scorer right now with a 9.9375. And we'll see if Anna Roberts can take over that lead. Haley Bryan on floor now. Front handspring, double front. Only one in the competition to do that. Aaliyah Finnegan, a 9.9625. So the national championship for KJ Johnson lasted about a minute and a half. Her own teammate Finnegan moves ahead of her 9.95. And now Finnegan has the lead on this event. Gabby Perea here in the anchor spot. Gabby on beam doing a wolf turn requires a lot of flexibility in your knees and your hips. Front toss connected into back tuck. Slight wobble there, does a good job correcting herself. Anna Roberts, 9.95. That is a career high for a score for her and that moves her into the top spot on vault as Haley, Haley Bryant finishes up floor exercise. And you can see bottom right of your screen, the Cal Bears, even before this Gabby Perea score comes in, they have a slight lead over Stanford. Stanford's done competing, but it did get a little interesting. Another 10th or so leading up to this routine for Stanford, and it would have put them in the lead, it would have put pressure on Gabby to hit this routine, but now pressure's off. Wow, unique dismount for Gabby on beam. Maddie Jones on bars, finishing things off with the Razorbacks there. Beautiful pack salto transition. I love that pirouette right on top of the bar. Hitting that handstand. Just the dismount, double layout. Oh, almost got that stick. Bent her legs a little bit too much on that dismount, but great routine. Fifth year gymnast Emma Silberman from Maryland here on ball. 995, the number to beat. Wow, very difficult round off. Full twist onto the board, back pike off. Don't see that vault very often. Head coach Brent Nelligan in his 15th season as the head coach of Maryland. Had a very good season this year. Doing an outstanding job there with the Terrapins. Haley Bryant, 9.9375. What a rotation for the LSU Tigers. Number one in the nation on this event. And you know, what do you do after a great rotation to anchor it? Well, you put up Kaya Johnson. 
who's one of the best. I tell you what, if this comes down to floor, pack a lunch if you're going against LSU. <laughs> pack a big lunch, John. Well, Kaya Johnson's season ended in heartbreaking fashion last year, a torn Achilles on floor at Kentucky. Now, coming into this season, she told me the pressure was really on herself because she wanted to be as good as she was before the injury. I asked her this week, now that her team found themselves at the national championship, how she met expectations. She said, truthfully, I think I've exceeded them. She is one special human being, great gymnast, but we talked to Jay Clark about her and he says, I don't know if I know a better human being than Kaya Johnson. And I was there when she tore her Achilles and just the, the air went out of the arena. It was at Kentucky and even the Kentucky fans and the Kentucky team appreciate Kaya Johnson, but man, what a comeback it has been. Skylar Killo Wilhelm finishing off her all around day. It's been a great day for her. Kaya finishing up with a double pike. Keep in mind, Skylar, she may be able to hear the floor music, the crowd, the distraction. These are things that are hard to practice and prepare for, handling it so well. Nice LSU contingent here in Dickey's Arena chanting LSU, and I can't imagine those fans are gonna be off the wall on Saturday. Over on the uneven bars, Jade, Jada Mangahas, now the senior from Allentown, Pennsylvania. A Parquet's gymnast, Parquet's producing many great gymnasts over the years. The extension of her shoulders is what stands out to me. Stretching all the way to the ceiling. Full in dismount. How about that, Allie? She sat this whole competition. She had to do the uneven bars. And at the last three minutes of the meet, she finally gets her turn and delivers. That is impressive it is so hard when you have to wait that long not to get in your own head and overthink it's also really hard to keep your body warm i'm impressed with that routine the final gymnast here in this fourth rotation lily smith 9.9125 on beam the last rotation 9.925 on bar started slow on vault with just a 9.725 or she may be in the hunt for that top all-around score, which currently is held by Haley Bryant. That should be a big score. Her attention to detail, the form in the tumbling, her fingertips to her toes. Watch the body position in this. Her toes are even pointed in that first tumbling pass. Ending with a front hand spring, one and a half to straddle jump. Gets one tenth bonus for that straddle jump at the end of the routine. Beautiful gymnast to watch. Looking forward to the next few years watching Lily Smith. I know Courtney Capetz-Carter, the head coach 
of the Georgia Bulldogs is excited about that too. And there she is getting a hug from maybe the greatest collegiate gymnast of all time, seven time NCAA champion. Cal's gonna advance. They survive, Allie, the difficult journey to the NCAA finals. Well deserved. These athletes have worked hard. They've put in so much dedication and to see it all come together for them is just wonderful. And the LSU Tigers, they advance with their second highest score at an NCAA championship. The Stanford Cardinal though, Allie, they, they may be a little disappointed, but they gave this a run. Head coach Tabitha Yim has got to be proud of that squad. Yeah, they're not that far off from Cal. They should be really proud of themselves. They finished on vault so strong. That's got to give them a lot of confidence going into next year. Arkansas Razorbacks, a few tears over there. Cinderella story coming out of that region. Jordan Weaver doing an amazing job, though, with that team. Watch out for the Razorbacks. But the joy in the corner of the Cal Bears and the LSU Tigers, they make it to the destination. Only two teams can advance. And those teams are the LSU Tigers and the Cal Bears. They were the favorites coming in and they get the job done. The Stanford Cardinal, they made it interesting for much of this competition. Not the night the Arkansas Razorbacks wanted to have. Those two teams, the dream ends here in the semifinals. Later today, Oklahoma, Florida, Utah, and Alabama. This is the semifinal a lot of people have been looking forward to. Taylor Davis is with the current leader in the all-around. My opinion, the best gymnast in the country, <laughs> Haley Bryant. Taylor? Say it again for the people in the back, John. <laughs> Haley is with me now. We meet again, Haley. You and your team move on to the finals for an NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. Talk to me a little bit about the emotion of this team coming into this week, knowing what all you went through last season to get here. I think we were just so excited to be here. We really went into the gym and just focused on every little detail, the landings, and we just worked so hard. And I'm just so proud of this team for absolutely everything inside the gym and outside the gym. And we're not done yet. And we're very, very excited to compete for something so big and something we've dreamed about literally since we've come to LSU. So we're just really excited to keep going. Like you said, this team is more than equipped to take a championship back to Baton Rouge. One more meet between you and that title. What will be the focus heading into Saturday? I think just not making it more than it has to be. Obviously, we're going to come in on Saturday knowing there's a national championship on the line, but the most important thing is to take it just like one more competition, one skill at a time, one event at a time, be present all the way through. And if we do that, if we do our normal gymnastics, the results are going to play out just as they should. Amazing. Congratulations Thank on today. You. Go enjoy it with your team. Thank you so much. Just another day in the office for Haley Bryant, Allie. Yeah, what a competition she had. This vault was fantastic. The height on that, the extension of her body. On bars, such a good release move. This dismount, double front half twist. Makes everything look easy. Standing punch front, so few gymnasts in the world can do that. Impressive the way Haley was able to handle this pressure. I love this first pass. Double front. Front layout into front one and a half. Makes it look like she's just having fun in the gym. Would never know the amount of pressure they were under today. It was a great semi-final number one, but only two teams can live on. And those two teams are the Tigers and the Bears. Congratulations to them. Coming up next, it's the point. Then at 9 Eastern, you better come back and join us. We'll be right back here in Fort Worth for the next semifinal. OU, Utah, Alabama, Florida battle it out for their two spots. For Taylor Davis and Allie Razor, I'm John Roethlisberger. So long for now.